Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Robert Peter. I teach courses related to research methodology, British history and culture at the University of Szeged in the southern part of Hungary. The aim of my talk today is to introduce a multilingual research tool called Evomet. Evomet stands for Analysis and Visualization of Bibliographic Metadata and Text. I will also offer a case study with the help of which I would like to demonstrate some DH analytical functions that we can use in Evermet. In fact, this case study was my very first DH project that inspired me a lot to learn about digital humanities. First, let me explain what motivated us to develop Evermet. We organized a conference in 2015 at my university. We invited people who dealt with content and textual analysis and worked at different institutions and faculties of my university. The central question of the conference was, how can we use natural language processing methods in social sciences and humanities research? After the presentations, it was clear that the use of such methods could offer enormous potential in scholarship. The organizers of the conference were so enthusiastic that after the event, they were actively involved in the establishment of the first Hungarian peer-reviewed digital humanities journal called Digitalis Bölcsészet. However, we also faced challenges during this conference. Several participants noted that they were unable to start a DH project because they did not have the necessary programming and scoding skills. We submitted an application at my university to develop user-friendly research tools after this event. That's how the collaboration between people of various departments at my university continued after the conference. Interdisciplinary collaboration is at the core of DH research that I thoroughly enjoy. I'm a member of the Daria Bibliographical Data Working Group, the headquarters of which is in Prague. The members of the working group tested Evermat and offered valuable feedback. The aim of Evermet is to provide a critical and interactive analysis of bibliographic metadata and text at scale by using data-driven and natural language processing methods in a number of languages and on a user-friendly platform. As for the theoretical and methodological background, we try to combine metadata and text analysis. By doing so, we can ask much more complex and sophisticated research questions than by simply focusing on textual analysis. Most LMP-based text analysis tools made only very limited use of bibliographical metadata. We also wanted to combine close and distant reading approaches. Close reading is a mode of analysis that pays special attention to the specific details complexities and nuances of a passage or a text, whereas distant reading is a data-driven research method that aims to unveil and analyze repeated patterns, hidden connections, trends, and parallels in large quantity of text. This is the workflow in Evermet. Users should, of course, upload their text and metadata. There are certain tools with the help of which they can clean the noisy and dirty uh, corpus. They can configure all the parameters, the parameters for all analytical tools. Afterwards, they can select the subcorpus on which they would like to run their analysis by searching, filtering, and refining the main corpus. Then uh, comes the analytical phase, they can perform textual and uh, data mining uh, analysis and visualize their results. And of course, they need to interpret um, the findings. 
Finally, they can export the results in various formats as well as the uh, configuration settings for the sake of reproducibility. That's how the Evermet interface looks like. On the top, you can see the different analytical uh, uh, functions and tools. In this short talk, I can only introduce half of them. On the left, you can see the uploaded databases, the facets, uh, such as publication year or authors. Users can perform advanced searches and command line uh, searches. The metadata visualizations in Evermet are interactive. It is the task of the user to choose which metadata fields she or he would like to analyze and how, what types of uh, diagrams and charts uh, she or he would like to use during the analysis. This is an example of a network visualization. You can see an author publisher bookseller network of 340 18th century Masonic related books. With the naked eye, you are unable to observe the connections between the different agents of uh, this book industry. You can also visualize a sub network of this uh, database. Evermet fosters critical analysis. It identifies and visualizes missing values and data gaps of the uploaded databases. On, on the right, under the author field, you can see the missing value uh, value. Users cannot ignore the missing values when it comes to analysis and interpretation of the results. It also highlights biases and errors in the databases, whether they are selection, metadata, or classification biases. This is an example for uh, metadata visualization. You can perform the gender analysis of the authors uh, of a given database. Here you can see the female, male, no author, and authors without unidentified gender in a linguistic subcorpus of uh, one of the university databases. You can see the data gap at the end of 1940s and early 1950s. And um, when the entry contained a name like G. Smith, we could not tell whether uh, J stood for Julia or John. Um, that's why we visualized this uncertainty in the data set and called it authors with unidentified gender. Let's move on to the case study that draws on the different representations of Freemasonry in 18th century British and Irish uh, press. The database contains almost uh, two, uh, 12,000 uh, articles from different libraries and archives. When I first visualized the distribution of Muslim related articles, <clears throat> that you can see on this graph, I was very astonished because as you can see, there is a peak in 1781. And I did not know, I could not explain what happened in this given year in the history of British and Irish Freemasonry. I must note that this type of visualization could be misleading if we don't know the context of 18th century newspapers. 18th century periodicals and journals often plagiarized each other. It means that uh, you can find a number of duplicates of the very same articles. <clears throat> uh, secondly, another problem is that uh, many newspaper issues are incomplete. Several newspapers have been lost over the centuries. That's why I analyze long running and <clears throat> comprehensive newspaper, such as the Gazetteer and New Daily Advertiser. It also uh, shows a peak in 1781, but it does not contain any duplicate items. Let's introduce the significant text 
analysis function of Avamat. It enables users to compare a subcorpora, a filtered subgroup of the data set with the entire corpus. It identifies the significant and unique characteristic words of a subcorpus compared to the entire corpus. Of course, I filtered the newspaper articles to the year 1781. And uh, on the word cloud, you can see the unique words characteristic of the articles published in this year. There are words such as perform, pantomime, decoration, theater, scenes, epilogue, and prologue. We can easily conclude that many of these words are concerned with theater. So we can assume that something related to theater uh, could take place in 1781. But let's, uh, <clears throat> uh, the, the Avmat also shows uh, the statistical information about this subcorpus, the significant words in a bar chart. Let's move on to another uh, uh, type of uh, uh, analysis. This is known as the tax sphere. You can visualize and analyze the context of a given keyword. Here the keyword is uh, the word Freemason, and I set up the word distance for, and I would like to explore the words uh, on the left and right uh, of the word uh, Freemason. This is the word cloud. And again, we can observe several terms related to theater, such as perform, pantomime, and harlequin is a really a unique term, very close to the word uh, Freemason within one word distance. So let's reveal the secret. Harlequin Freemason was a very successful uh, pantomime that was performed 63 times in London between 1780 and 1781. It was written by Charles Dibden. And what is interesting to note is that uh, the study of this uh, performance had been ignored in scholarship on the history of Freemasonry as well as the history of 18th century theater. Avamat users can read the articles related to Harlequin Freemason by using the keyword in context or concordance function. I'd like to introduce topic modeling. Topic modeling clusters documents in semantic groups. The idea is to find hidden semantic information by using statistical methods to discover the themes that are embodied in the text and reveal the connection of these themes and their changes over times. I wanted to analyze nine topics and you can see the words uh, related to each cluster. Let's have a look at topic number five um, that contains words Harlequin, perform, pantomime, principle, present, theater, conclude, song, and procession. Of course, they are all related to the Harlequin Freemason uh, performance. The other uh, topics uh, also make sense. They are relevant in the study of uh, Freemasonry, but time doesn't allow me to elaborate on them. So let's see. At the distribution of these topics in time series. In 1781, you can see the light green uh, color, which is concerned with the topic of uh, Harlequin Freemason uh, articles. We can ask another research question. Which newspapers uh, publish the greatest number of articles related to Freemasonry. You can see the results here. The Public Advertiser, the Morning Proican and London Advertiser, Morning Post and Daily Advertiser, and the Gazetteer and New Delhi Advertiser as, are on the top of the list. Why did these newspapers publish so many articles about Freemasonry? To answer this question, 
I examined the owners and editors of these newspapers. It was very interesting to observe that jo James Perry was a, the editor of the Morning Chronicle and the Gazetteer and New Daily Advertiser. He was not only a professional journalist in the late 18th century, early 19th century, but he was also a high ranking Freemason, a deputy grand master of the Asians Grand Lodge in the late 1780s. He was so influential a person in the history of Freemasonry that he helped to prepare the Articles of Union that basically signified the union of the two rivaling Grand Lodges in 1813. He even signed this uh, document that you can see on the left. Although James Perry played a crucial role in the history of Freemasonry, he's totally ignored in scholarship on the history of this brotherhood. Finally, I'd like to uh, mention some useful digital humanities tools, such as Lexus, that you can use for cleaning and analyzing tests. OpenRefine is also a very useful tool to clean data sets and spreadsheets. Voyant tool is a web-based text analysis tool, and I'd like to recommend you Lawrence Anthony software, the Endcon and Sorant, with the help of which you can correct, for example, common optical character recognition errors. To conclude, in this short talk, I offered an ideal case study. It is ideal because scholars have not examined newspaper articles related to Freemasonry so far, we have seen that uh, we could highlight unknown connections and trends uh, that are impossible to identify with traditional research methods. Digital humanities tools can be used to test and analyze old problems and hypotheses with new methods, and they often offer novel type of evidence. In this talk, I wanted to stress the importance of digital source criticism. For me, digital humanities is really great fun. I encourage you to be open to the novelties and surprises in digital humanities research. Thank you for your attention. And if you are interested in the development and release of Avamet, please feel free to sign up for this newsletter.